important if you want an actual diagnosis that you talk with a professional and you never say you have a diagnosis that you have not been given by a professional this really spreads misinformation hello guys and welcome to my channel today i want to talk about self-diagnosing and why it is problematic the view i'm going to be talking from is that i think self-diagnosing is problematic and it can also be helpful so it can be helpful to figure out if you will do research what you might have but you should never think that the diagnosis you think you might have is something you actually have and it's really important that when you talk with other people you say that you're self-diagnosed and you haven't actually been diagnosed by a professional and that you say you might have this disorder but you're not sure that's very very important because otherwise the people who actually have the diagnosis is going to be stigmatized even further because there might be misinformation out there if you say you have a disorder you do not have. So that is just my point of view. Just This was just me shortly expressing it at the start of the video because I think doing your research on a diagnosis you think you might have, that's all right. It's very important that you say to people that you do not actually have this diagnosis it's something you think you have that you haven't been given it by a professional that's very very important but it's all right to do your research and to you might have this diagnosis just real important if you want an actual diagnosis that you talk with a professional and you never say you have a diagnosis that you have not been given by a professional because this really spreads misinformation and a lot of people can relate to the symptoms that people who have a diagnosis have in some way or another. The big difference is just that the people who actually have a diagnosis are actually suffering with the symptoms and you might just feel like you can relate to them. And there's a big difference between these two. That's why it's very important as a professional that gives you the diagnosis. And a lot of diagnosis and disorders they have similarities so for a person who haven't studied this who do not have enough experience with it might not be able to differ one diagnosis from another because a lot of them have similarities you might think you have this diagnosis but if you actually talk to a personal it might be a complete opposite diagnosis so it's very important that you do not think that you mo know more than a professional and that you do not label yourself as someone with a diagnosis when you have not been given it by a professional. You know, a doctor might also diagnose you wrong. This can happen, especially if you have a disease where there might be strong symptoms of anxiety and depression. Then the first time around, they might think you have anxiety and depression, but later they might find out that this was not the main disease. This was just symptoms of the main disease. So of course doctors and professionals can also give you the wrong diagnosis. But it's more likely that they will give you a right diagnosis because they have experience and they have a long education and they really know a lot about these diagnoses. Do not ever think you know more than a professional. It's all right to kind of believe yourself if you think you have the wrong diagnosis or feel you might have certain diagnosis. But it's also very important to actually listen to the professional because in most scenarios of course there are bad doctors but in most scenarios they do know more than you and again a lot of diagnoses can look a lot alike so it's very important that if you get a diagnosis you get education about it because if you get education about it it might be easier for you to understand why you have been given this diagnosis because there's definitely a reason why you've given it and a diagnosis cannot cover every symptom we have uh, that's very hard for it to do but of course if you feel like there's a big chunk of the symptoms you have that they are missing with the diagnosis they have right now then it's of course valid to talk with a professional about maybe you have another diagnosis uh, also or, might, or maybe it's not the right diagnosis you've been given just of course remember to talk with them about the reasons that you think you might not have the right diagnosis and it's very important to say that I a diagnosis not just a label you can take it's not like being asexual or something it's not just a label that you can take for yourself 
it's very important that a professional had diagnosed you. Um, so we do not go out there and spread misinformation. And it's also really important so you can get the right help because if you think you have a diagnosis and you do not have one or you have a completely other diagnosis, you cannot get the right help either. So it's really important you know that you have the right diagnosis and a professional have diagnosed you once or multiple times to find the right diagnosis so you know that you're getting the right help. And if the help you are getting simply do not feel right, maybe you're getting the help from the wrong place or maybe you have the wrong diagnosis. And as I said, a lot of people can relate to some of the symptoms that a diagnosis has. The big difference between someone that has a diagnosis and someone who does not is that the person with the diagnosis is really suffering and the other person that does not have diagnosis maybe just be able to relate a bit to their symptoms. So this is the big difference. Are you suffering or aren't you? Um, of course we all suffer, but do you suffer to such a degree that you can't function in your normal life? That's when it becomes a problem and that's when you should seek help because then you might be ill with something. And some people might just um, give themselves a diagnosis on social media, for example, to get attention. But it is so important that you do not say you have a diagnosis that you do not have, aka if you aren't diagnosed by a professional with one. because. This furthermore stigmatizes the people who have a diagnosis. If you show a diagnosis as something it is not, or as something everyone has, for example, some people will say everyone is a bit autistic. No, everyone is not a bit autistic. The symptoms of the diagnosis might be relatable to some people, but this does not mean that they have a diagnosis. Because everyone can relate to every diagnosis a bit, but this does not mean they are suffering with the symptoms enough to have a diagnosis. And it's point you just do not go around saying you have a diagnosis that you do not have. And of course, if you think you might have it sorted, it's very important that you discuss it with a professional. Another problematic part is the rise of self-diagnosing on platforms like TikTok and faking being mentally ill. I found an article about this and I'm going to be reading a little from the article about it. We've seen an explosion of Tourette's like ticks in our unit and every single case has been linked with watching countless TikTok videos about people with Tourette's syndrome, Dr. Adelio said. These kids don't have Tourette's but they are pretending either they have a functional movement disorder or a result of stress and possible underlying insanity or depression which may or may not be properly diagnosed. After a series of individualized treatment plans, and through weeks of, of TikTok, the patients were back to normal, the ticks were gone, showing just how powerful and influential these TikTok videos can be. And again, this was just an example of people self-diagnosing and faking their illness and how big an impact this has on other people. The good side of TikTok is of course that it brings more awareness to mental illness, but right alongside that, the bad side of TikTok is that it brings a lot of misinformation about mental illnesses because a lot of people are faking having it or they are self-diagnosing and they do not tell this to people. So people actually think that the people who are faking it are self-diagnosing. The way they show this illness actually how it is when this might be really wrong. This might really be misinformation. That's why it's really important that you disclaim if you're self-diagnosed or if you think you have something versus if you're actually diagnosed with it. So we do not spread misinformation and so that we do not stigmatize a group that is already stigmatized because believe me, people with mental illnesses are already hardly stigmatized and they do not need you making videos about illness that you do not have and stigmatizing them even further with misinformation. Please disclose it if you just think you have something and you haven't been diagnosed. The problem with all this is that young people are quick to believe what they see and hear. Whatever the case or situation, younger people are quick to believe what they see and hear on the internet. But I'm doing much questioning or further research. People can say they have whatever they want and they might be lying and this is really pro problematic. Especially with so many people faking titles and faking to have mental illnesses. For example, if I saw a big rise on TikTok of my diagnosis, I would question it. Because only a very low percentage have 
my diagnosis. So I would know that, that people would have to be faking it. Just like with the disorder DID, the disorder where you have multiple personalities in one body. Again, only very, very few people have this disorder. So the fact that this is one is on the rise on TikTok means a lot of people are faking its popularity. DID, just to sort of say, is a dissociative identity disorder and PIRI is known as multiple personality disorder and it's a split personality disorder. It's a mental disorder characterized by the maintenance of at least two distinct and relative enduring personality states. This story is accompanied by memory gaps beyond what would explain by ordinary memory issues. The personality state alternately shows in a person's behavior. Yeah, this is often related to neglect and abuse. And again, this is the story that very, very few people have. So you kind of can use logic when it comes to this because if very few people have it, but it's on the rise on TikTok, a lot of people have to be faking it. I just think that's, that's really sad. Actually, Anthony Padilla, he made a video about DID, um, where he actually interviewed some people who actually had it. And you can easily see when a person is faking it and they aren't. I think when you see a real deal, but of course it can also be hard for some people to see if it's the real deal or not. But it's just very important that we're very honest if we are actually diagnosed by a professional or if we're self-diagnosed so we do not spread misinformation and we do not stigmatize people who are already stigmatized. And you know this only stigmatizes the people with the, with the actual disorder even more because now you might think the people who are faking it are real and the ones who actually have it are faking it. Nonetheless, the misinformation about the disorder, these people that fake the disorder brings to the table only makes it harder for people with actual diagnosis to be understood by other people. If you know someone or a kid who is trapped in believing TikToks and the misinformation here, I really recommend that you read the articles that I'm going to link down below that I've used a bit for this video. And it's really important to talk to a kid about how I think critically. Remember there's a certain age where the brain is developed enough to think critically and also remember that logical and critical thinking is something kid has to learn. It does not come naturally. It's really important that you talk to your kids about this uh, when they're on these apps so people don't diagnose themselves with things they actually aren't. Like, a lot of people suddenly believe they have Tourette's or that they might be trans when they're actually just more feminine person or more masculine person. So really stop the spread of misinformation because it's hurting a lot of people. That's kind of what I want to say with this video is that please stop spreading misinformation and be honest if you're self-diagnosed and be honest if you think you have something and be honest if you actually have a diagnosis because if you aren't honest the misinformation is going to spread and it's going to stigmatize people with actual disorder or disability or mental illness so please just help us and the world to stop spreading this mis misinformation because having a mental illness is not something that should bring you popularity. You should not fake a mental illness just for popularity because you're hurting so many people by doing this. And I'm saying this as a person who's actually mentally ill, who's actually been diagnosed with a schizotypical personality disorder. Because of course I understand that some people might have not have the money for a diagnosis because in some countries it costs a lot to get a diagnosis. But it's very important that still that you do not say you have something you don't. It's really important that you have been through a professional that diagnosed, diagnosed you before you say you have something. If you don't have something and you're not sure if you have something, just say it's self-diagnosed or you think you might have something. Just be really clear in the way that you talk to other people so that we do not spread more misinformation. Please stop spreading misinformation. Be honest. Yeah guys, all I had to say for this video I hope that I might have helped somebody out there. So yeah guys, uh, thank you all a lot for watching this video. I hope it 
might help somebody out there and i hope that the world spreads a little less misinformation when it comes to disabilities mental any kind of illnesses actually so yeah um please remember to comment like subscribe if you like this video thank you so much for your support and i'll see you soon in another video bye guys